Good morning and welcome to the Curtis Heritage Education Center where we use the past to inspire the future. Today we have an interesting lesson, the combination of innovation and death, more specifically how people responded to death, which we all know as the period of mourning. The mourning period has a number of different aspects. One of them is the vehicle that was used to carry the coffin, which today we all know is a hearse. The name hearse started with the very first vehicles that were designed to be a little more than a buckboard to carry the casket. They had a oval window, curved rear entry. Well, the vehicle we're going to talk about today was a revolutionary, innovative development in the history of funeral wagons or hearses. James Cunningham, who was one of the most innovative wagon builders of his day, designed a new kind of vehicle that was squared off corners, upright pillars, and very intricate hand carving. The reaction to it was so strong that they determined that it needed a different name, so they became known as funeral cars. In fact, the first one that he did was so over-the-top carved, he was casting about for a place to show it for the first time, and he decided a big exhibition in New Orleans was the perfect spot. And while all of the funeral directors and morticians in New Orleans thought it was fabulous, it was even too over the top for them. So he had to transport it home. On the way home to Rochester, New York, he managed to sell it to a funeral director in Nashville. That changed the whole course of funeral cars. Everybody followed his lead. This particular vehicle dates from 1887 and it was one of the cleanest, simplest funeral cars that Cunningham designed. His later designs were much more elaborate. The carving on them would take four to six months to do. They were obviously very expensive, but they were in high demand. And his ability to keep innovating what he was making went well beyond vehicles so that ultimately in the 1960s, the company was supplying electric switches to NASA for the space program. In addition to James Cunningham creating an entire new style of, of funeral car rather than a hearse, the clothing and, and behavior also changed. In the 1800s, the funeral dress was the traditional black, as it is today, but there were various mourning periods, how long should you mourn, and that depended on who it was you were mourning. If it was your husband, it could be as long as two years. A child could be a year, could be six months. Part of the traditional dress for women was it could be an everyday dress, but it had to be black, and they would add what was called crepe, which today we think of as a veil if it was draped over their head. This is some of the early crepe, which had an innovation to give it the look that it has. They were made from a combination of silk and wool, but to get the texture to it, they were treated with a mixture of formaldehyde and arsenic and zinc. Interestingly enough, they found that when women were wearing this for extended periods of time, they were dying, obviously from breathing formaldehyde and arsenic. So the solution was don't change the product, wear it for shorter periods of time because they still want to sell crepe. Eventually, new manufacturing processes for clothing enabled them to come up with a much safer product. By 1901, this safe product was the style that everyone was using, but the manufacturer realized if it's a longer lasting, safer product, women aren't dying as fast, so we're not having as many funerals, we still want to market our product. So in one of the early examples of what today we would call programmed obsolescence, they started 
pushing the notion that you should only use this to mourn one death and after that you should burn it because if you don't you could be responsible for the next person's death. Probably not a great marketing strategy today but very successful back then. The Civil War sadly had a tremendous effect on the American culture, one of them being the an estimated over 600,000 deaths. The embalming, modern embalming process actually started in the Civil War and was a solution to the problem of how do you preserve a body long enough to get it home for its proper funeral. One of the keys to James Cunningham's success was always being at the forefront or bringing about changes to his industry. And his funeral car, inspired by the number of funerals that resulted from the Civil War, was no exception. He created an entire new direction for the industry, providing a well-decorated, elegant vehicle that had previously been a pretty utilitarian design. And interestingly, today, we've reverted to a simpler black vehicle that we again call a hearse. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two. If you would like to learn more, subscribe to our channel or go to our website.